Hello, everyone. It's 2 p.m. exactly. And in um, respect and honor of your time on this beautiful Saturday afternoon, at least where I am at this part of the world, we're going to go ahead and start on time and allow more people to enter the room. So welcome to Food as Medicine, Intermittent Fasting uh, for Beginners, sponsored by the Black Vegetarian Society and presented by True Self Total Health. Um, kudos for you really for taking time to invest in you and your health and wellness. Uh, my commitment to you, as always, is to provide um, a content-rich presentation in a format that's easy to understand and interactive. I also know how frustrating it can be to get really great information but not know how to implement it. That's why we will provide you, as always, with tools, resources, and Q&A uh, to guide you uh, and give you a jump start to take control of your health now. A few housekeeping issues. We're going to answer questions at the end of the presentation to keep a good flow. You can post your questions in the chat um, if you're familiar with that as we go along and then I'll pick up on the other side or ask to speak using the raise hand icon at the end of the presentation. I invite everyone to remain off video and muted uh, to eliminate any um, distractions during the presentation. Um, also, we invite you to complete a short survey at the end of the webinar. Everyone who completes the survey will also receive a free one year subscription to Vegetarian Journal and an African plate recipe book. If you've attended um, any of these, you probably already have received that. So if you could take a few moments and still give us feedback, we greatly appreciate that. Uh, if you stay to the end, you have to stay to the end, you'll receive a link for immediate access to my Intermittent Fasting for Beginners e-guide. Um, so that you can practically apply what you've learned right away. And finally, everyone who registered, every one of you, there was about 150 of you who registered for this, will be eligible to participate in a raffle drawing to win a vegan starter kit um, titled Everything You Need to Know About Plant-Based Eating by Dr. Neil um, D. Bernard. And um, yeah, and I think that's it. Um, just want to let you know there's going to be lots of valuable information to show our appreciation uh, for you investing uh, time to learn and hopefully implement life changing information. We're going to move on to the next slide. Also, if you have any problems hearing me or seeing me um, or seeing the slide, just let me know through the chat. Okay, food is medicine. Why, why food is medicine? Uh, the beauty of food as medicine is that the choice to heal and promote health can begin as soon as the next meal. I love that quote, one of my most favorite quotes. Um, food is either nourishing the body or breaking it down. What you eat is either improving your health or depleting it. There's no neutral effect. Real food, not food-like substances, provides nutrients to support our mental and physical health. Nutrient insufficiencies and deficiencies are the root cause of disease, discomfort, and dissatisfaction with how you look and feel and can impact the functioning of every system in your body. Nutrition along with other lifestyle practices will give you what conventional medicine simply can't, a way to get well, not just feel better. So I'm gonna go look at the chat because it looks like um, someone may have a note there for me. So I'm gonna go take a look. Um, you can't see. Can you all not see the slide? No, you can't see me. No, you're not gonna see me. You can't see the slide. I can see the slide. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, you'll see me on the other side. It's more important for you to pay attention to the slide now, but thank you for letting me know. Okay, now we're going to go to the next slide. So I want to tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Tony St. Clair Fish. Um, as you can see, um, I'm the owner of CEO True Self Total Health. I am a functional health coach, a nutritional endocrinology coach and educator, a personal and professional development coach, and a raw food chef instructor and yoga instructor. I'm also a founding board member of the Black Veg Society. You all probably have noticed that we've changed our logo from Black Vegetarian of Maryland to Black Veg Society to um, more represent our global approach to um, supporting people. Again, a little bit about me. I've been pr a proud owner and CEO of True Self Total Health for about 10 years, assisting and guiding people who have forgotten or perhaps have never learned how to stay healthy and balanced in mind, body, and spirit. Among other things, I help people to detoxify their bodies and minds, learn how to eat healthy foods, and improve their overall health and wellness. 
I'm also a behavioral change expert. So I help my clients bridge the gap between where they are and where they want to, their health and wellness to be by guiding them in understanding, identifying, and relying on their innate strengths and wisdom to create meaningful goals and inspired action steps and sustainable lifestyle practices. I'm also a functional health and wellness coach and healthcare team member for Capital Integrative Health in Bethesda, Maryland, an integrative health practice that combines the best of conventional and complementary medicine. And again, just to remind you, this, this webinar is being sponsored by the Black Veg Society of Maryland or Black Veg Society. Okay, I'm, we have, looks like we have another note in the chat. I'm gonna make sure that there's nothing going on. Um, I'm not sure why you can't see the slides. Uh, most other people can see the slides. So um, uh, the majority of people can see the slides. I think your name is Simona. So I'm not sure why you can't. Okay. It says I'm sharing, so I'm trusting that. All right. So we'll go to the disclaimer, which is a super important part of this. So take a few seconds and just read this disclaimer. There are two things I want you to hear regarding this disclaimer. The presentation is meant to be educational only. So it's meant to be a sharing of information based on my experience and training or the experience of experts I rely on. What it's not is medical advice. I'm not treating, curing, diagnosing any conditional illness. If you have a condition that requires medical attention, please seek it because uh, as I'm not a licensed um, practitioner and the state of Maryland frowns on me pretending to be so. Okay, so if you are inspired to implement a change, no matter how small you think it is, please share what you're doing with a licensed qualified healthcare practitioner, especially if you are taking medications or have a chronic condition. Okay, I'm just gonna check the chat again to make sure that people are okay. Okay, Cheryl, um, someone says you can change your view Cheryl says you can try to change your view to see the slide. So I'm gonna rely on you all to help your, the fellow commu uh, community people so that I can keep moving. Okay, all right. Thank you so much for um, helping out. All right, so why are you here, all right? Maybe you're just frustrated with all the fad diets around the internet determining which food plan is right for you. Maybe you've tried everything, in quotes, <laughs> and still can't achieve or maintain your ideal weight. Or maybe you have an insatiable and seemingly uncontrollable appetite, or maybe you're just frustrated about your health journey and not achieving your wellness goals. So if that sounds like you, you're in the right place. It's my hope that this webinar empowers you with information and practical tools and inspires you to take control of your health now. So let's talk about what you can expect to learn because I think that's super important. Ways to do intermittent fasting, do's and don'ts for intermittent fasting, intermittent fasting and exercise, customized eating during your feeding hours with nutritionally dense plant-based foods, dealing with your fasting hours and intermittent fasting for women. So this is meant to be a comprehensive, easy to follow workshop on how to do intermittent fasting the right way. Knowledge is the greatest tool in your arsenal, but knowledge is really a combination of science and information that I provide, but also your own wisdom to practically apply it. This workshop is intended to empower you to make the right and healthy choices for your body. So let's start first with what is intermittent fasting, right? It, it's, it's an eating pattern where you cycle between eating and fasting. It's not a starvation diet, right? That's the most important thing I want you to know here. It's an eating pattern that includes hours or days of no or minimal food consumption without deprivation of essential nutrients. So here are the ways that you can do intermittent fasting. Now they, these are the six most popular ways to do intermittent fasting. Some may be familiar to you, some may not. I'm going to discuss each one in a little more detail. So there's the 16-8 method, the 5-2 diet, the eat, stop, eat, a way to do intermittent fasting, the alternate day fasting, the warrior, and spontaneous meal skipping. So let's talk about 16-8. This is a popular option allowing you to eat for eight hours and then fast for 16 hours. So you try to do it as often as possible. It can be done every day of the week actually, right? Because it, it involves fasting every day for about 16 hours and restricting your daily window to approximately eight hours. Now within the eating window, you can fit in one or more meals. 
Now, this method is known as the Lean Gains Protocol and was popularized by the fitness expert Martin Burkin. Um, doing this method of fasting can actually be as simple as not eating anything after dinner and skipping breakfast. For example, if you finish your last meal at 8 p.m. and don't eat again until noon the next day, you've already technically fasted for 16 hours, almost effortlessly. So for people who get hungry in the morning and like to eat breakfast, this method may be very hard to get used to. However, many breakfast skippers instinctively eat this way. And I'm actually one of those and I've been that way for quite a long time. So now let's talk about the 5-2 diet. So the 5-2 diet or way of eating really involves eating what you typically eat five days of the week and restricting your calorie intake to about 500 to 600 um, calories for two days of the week. Now this diet is called the fast diet and was popularized by British journalist, Michael Mosley. On the fasting days, it's recommended that women eat 500 calories. Now these are on the fasting days, not the feasting days and that men eat 600 calories. For example, um, you might eat normally every day of the week except Mondays and Thursdays. And for those two days, you eat two small meals of 250 calories each um, for women and 300 calories each for men. So the 5-2 diet, obviously, because of the way you eat and restrict the calories during your eating um, time uh, can be effective at helping with weight loss. Let's go now to the eat, stop, eat. <laughs> um, some people will fast just one full day a week while others will fast uh, twice a week with a few days in between. You can also transition into it slowly, starting with one day, then increasing it to two when you feel comfortable with that. Eat, stop, eat involves a 24 hour fast once or twice per week. And this method was popularized by fitness expert Brad Pillon, and he's been quite popular for four years, for a few years actually. Now, fasting from dinner one day to dinner the next day really amounts to a full 24 hour fast. So, for example, if you finish dinner at 7 p.m. Monday and you don't eat again until dinner at 7 p.m. Tuesday, you've completed a full 24 hour fast. You can also fast from breakfast to breakfast or lunch to lunch, the end result is still the same. Uh, water, coffee, or zero calorie beverages are allowed during the fast, but no solid foods are permitted, right? So if you're going to do this, right, and, and if you're trying to manage your weight, it's very important that you stick to your regular diet during the eating periods. In other words, you should eat the same amount of food as if you hadn't been fasting at all. The potential downside of this method is that a full 24-hour fast is it's fairly difficult for many people, but you don't need to go in it um, all right away. You don't go, have to go to the deep in the pool. You can start the shallow in the pool. It's fine to start with 14 to 16 hours to begin with and then move upward from there. Okay, so we're halfway there. Let's look at alternate day fasting. In alternate day fasting, you fast about every other day. Now there are several different versions of this method. Some of them allow about 500 calories during the fasting days. However, one small study found that alternate day fasting wasn't any more effective at producing weight loss or weight management than a typical calorie restrictive diet. A full fast every other day can seem rather extreme uh, for most people. So it's not recommended for beginners. It's not just extreme on your body, but really mindset um, because we celebrate around food. We, you know, everything we do really is around surrounds food. So this is really hard mentally. Um, also with this method, you may go to bed very hungry several times per week, which is not pleasant and probably not sustainable in the long term. And really when you're taking on intermittent fasting, I, I think it's really a lifestyle. It's something that you want to be able to do for the rest of your life. Um, and so if it's unpleasant or difficult, uh, you're not going to continue to do it. So let's talk about the warrior, the warrior. The basis of this plan is that you just eat once a day after fasting for nearly 24 hours. So really about 20 hours or so. Um, th that meal would be rather large and sustain you for the next 24 hours. It could be almost anything you wanna eat, though of course you should be eating um, 3000 calories of donuts and soda. So there are some basic food rules with the warrior. Now this was popularized by fitness expert, Ori Hoffmechler. Um, it involves eating small amounts of raw fruits and vegetables during the day and eating one huge meal at night. Basically, you fast all day and feast at night. 
uh, within a four hour eating window. The warrior diet again um, was, was one of the first popular diets to include some form of intermittent fasting. Um, the warrior diet really, the basis of it was that your food choices are mostly whole, unprocessed foods. To boost nutrition, I would add that it's recommended that your food plan um, be plant centered. So it be whole, mostly whole, unprocessed or minimally processed um, organic plants. All right, well, that's the warrior. Now we're gonna talk about spontaneous meal skipping. This is one that many of my clients start with uh, because it allows them really to, um, to be more intuitive about eating and less structure because the structure uh, was something that, that really was um, triggering them. So they decided to start here. So with, with the spontaneous meal skipping, you don't need to follow a structured intermittent fasting plan to reap some of the benefits. You're still gonna be, reap benefits, maybe not as great. Um, so this option allows you to skip meals from time to time, such as when you don't really feel hungry or you're too busy to cook and eat. And some of you have probably already experienced that, right? How many times have you just, oh, I just don't have time and you've gone and extended your, your fasting time almost naturally. Um, so also due to hormone imbalances, some people may need to eat more frequently until it's resolved. So you may not be able to um, try the spontaneous meal skipping. Others bodies are, are more equipped to handle long periods of fasting and can miss one or two meals from time to time. So you know yourself best. This is really an opportunity for you to be more intuitive and really be aware of your body. So if you're really not hungry one day, just skip breakfast, maybe just eat a healthy lunch and dinner. Or if you're traveling somewhere and you can't find anything you want to eat, maybe just do a short fast. Skipping one or two meals when you feel inclined to do so is basically a spontaneous intermittent fast. So we went through that kind of fast. And if we need to go back and review, we can at the end. So let's talk about the health benefits of intermittent fasting. Well, there, there, there's a broad spectrum of, of health benefits, but these are the four that, um, that resonate with me and that really um, have resonated with my clients. So one, it's a simpler way to release weight. It really simply is because you're, you're doing it more intuitively. It helps with blood sugar control. It increases cognitive function and promotes healthy eating, all good things and the good benefits of intermittent fasting. So I'm going to talk about each of them in a little bit of detail later or moving forward now. Okay, so the simpler way to release weight. This young lady is smiling because she's, she was able to pick one method of intermittent fasting and stick with it, eating healthy and moderately during those eating periods and fasting during other than the hours of the day. So it doesn't really get any easier than that. I wanna tell you a little bit about why yo-yo dieting um, is not conducive to successful weight loss. I know a lot of people do that and it's actually harmful to the body. Too many changes in short periods of time can lead to many issues, including digestion, weight gain, and abdominal pain. So you wanna to stick to one method and keep with it. Uh, the reason that so many people are having success with intermittent fasting, again, it's simple. Now, although intermittent fasting results in reduced calorie consumption, weight loss is not really the main driver of the health benefits observed in uh, clinical studies. According to the authors, the key mechanism is metabolic switching. You're basically turning your body into a fat burning machine. So um, um, instead of, of using glucose stored in the liver, you're using ketones that are stored in the fat. That's what makes it simple. Your body's doing all the work. It also helps with blood sugar control. Moving beyond helping you to lose weight or burn fat, intermittent fasting is also efficient at controlling blood sugar levels. Many, many, many of my clients have come to me with blood sugar issues, either diagnosed or undiagnosed. Um, so when you do intermittent fasting over a prolonged period of time and do it the right way, you can start decreasing your insulin resistance and balancing blood glucose um, levels naturally. And when you do this, you might just help to treat, treat your type two diabetes and maybe avoid diabetes if you were in the high risk category. Um, many people are using medications to control their blood sugar. This would be a great way to, um, if you're not there yet, to make sure you do, that you don't have to rely on medication. And if you are relying on medication to minimize or really decrease or minimize your reliance on that. So it helps control blood sugar. Let's talk about 
in increasing uh, cognitive function. So there have been animal studies on intermittent fasting and, and how it can have a positive effect on your cognitive health, which uh, helps to promote brain and memory health. You can actually reduce your risk for brain-related illnesses like dementia and Alzheimer's. I'm going to say that again. With intermittent fasting, you can actually reduce your risk for brain-related illnesses like dementia and Alzheimer's disease with both a healthy diet and, and intermittent fasting. Now, studies were performed at the Laboratory of Neurosciences at the National Institute of Aging on this very subject. So you can go to that study and um, if you're a geek, um, like I am, really get into it and see um, you know, how those studies actually um, brought us to this point. Now, we're going to talk about it promotes healthy eating. That's really great benefit of intermittent fasting. The basis of intermittent fasting effectiveness is to have nutrient-dense foods during the eating phase uh, so it can help you to learn to eat better overall. Um, intermittent fasting takes away overeating, requires you to really be conscious when you do eat, right? Because you don't have that many feeding periods. So you have to be conscious to make sure you get all your nutrients in. Nutritious, whole, plant-based, minimally processed foods provide you with so many amazing health benefits for your weight, for the heart health, for cholesterol, even your bones. So the basis of intermittent fasting effectiveness is to, again, have nutrient-dense foods during the eating phases so it can help you learn to be a better eater. So what you should eat while intermittent fasting? This is super important and I'm actually, it's so important that I'm providing this information in the guide that I'm gonna give you at the end of this presentation. So the top three things that I see with my clients that attempt to do this is they, they overindulge and they binge. They forget to drink water or stay hydrated during the fasting window or they won't eat a healthy plant-based diet. So that destroys your nutrients. So again, one of the biggest mistakes people make when following intermittent fasting is that they may be counting the hours until they can eat. And then they're going to overeat because the whole purpose is, oh, I'm not eating. It's food, food, food. The point is not to starve yourself for 20 hours so you can binge eat for four hours. You want to stick to your regular diet, but eat in one or more substantial meals instead of constantly eating throughout the day. So if you're restricting calories, continue to do so, but still stick to nutrient dense meals. You want that food to fuel your body and sustain you for the next fasting phase, right? This is not a starvation diet. This is not a starvation diet. You also wanna to stick to a healthy diet. Now, many people make the mistake of using intermittent fasting as an excuse to eat what they want and then fast assuming it's gonna balance out and they won't gain weight. Um, that's almost like the, I'm gonna eat French fries but drink a Diet Coke kind of, um, scenario. Um, this is the absolute wrong mindset to have. Plus, you aren't going to obtain all the incredible benefits of intermittent fasting if you choose this method. The plant-based diet that yields the greatest nutrition would be whole, minimally processed, organic fruits, vegetables, legumes, um, and gluten-free grains you know, like uh, quinoa, oats, and buckwheat. So we're going to go on to the next slide. Almost done. And then you guys can jump in and start asking questions. So um, dealing with your fasting hours. So this is also an area that I discuss in the free guide I'm going to give you because this is, again, another area that many people um, struggle with. Uh, so here are some two good tips and do's that you should do for your fasting. Um, fasting should, should be primarily done while you're sleeping and you should stay busy during the fasting hours. And actually, a good amount of your fasting hours should exist while you're sleeping because you know, you're already going to be in a fasted state during this time. So the rest of your fasted hours are before or after your bedtime hours. Now, sleeping through the fast is an excellent way to schedule it. You want to consider if you're hungry in the morning or the evening when deciding when the eating hours should be. Now, someone who's starving when they're waking up uh, has a harder time fasting in the morning. So you can adjust your schedule to where your fast starts late in the afternoon instead of in the evening. Also, staying busy during your fasting hours can be either working or working on your hobbies. Um, it could also include doing things like, I don't know, cleaning your garage, organizing the closets. Just don't watch the clock, especially early on, because it, that's a, that sets you up, I think, for doing this not ideally. And so I support my clients a lot in this area and helping them because, and this is really a mindset, staying busy during fasting hours. 
as a mindset. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about intermittent fasting and workouts. The benefits are that you burn more fat because you wanna be a fat burner. Um, it helps with digestion. Um, and also you get more balanced blood sugar. The challenges are that you do workouts before the eating phase and it can be challenging for people. You need to be careful of cardio workouts. So generally speaking, you want to try to schedule your workouts for shortly before you're going to start your eating phase. Of course, this may vary based on the type of workout you do and how long you, you know, your fast lasts. This, the intensity of your workouts can also make a big difference. Uh, some people have incredibly intense workout routines like CrossFit and they need um, the boost in protein and carbs prior to the workout. This is the case. You may be someone who should do your workouts during your eating phase and not your fasting phase. If you decide to work out when you are fasting, be careful with your cardio workouts. High intensity, high intensity cardio, like running or hit, high intensity um, interval training can be a little hard on your body uh, when you haven't been eating for a prolonged period. So maybe don't schedule your um, don't schedule your cardio uh, workout on the days when you are fasting. So if you do 24-hour protocols, particularly, so if you're doing a 16-8 split then you want to do cardio after you have entered your eating um, period. Okay, so I'm getting noticed that my, um, my, my computer may go to sleep. So hold on just a moment. All right, just gave the computer some juice, so we're good to go. All right, let's um, go to the next slide. So intermittent fasting for women, another important area, and I cover this in the guide that I'm giving you. So the benefits are um, that increases your body, again, fat burning, uh, increases energy and cognitive function, reduces blood pressure and cholesterol and more balanced blood sugar. You see a common theme here. The challenges are hormonal changes and imbalance are real. The struggle is real in this area for uh, particularly um, peri and premenopausal women. So while there are a few different side effects of doing intermittent fasting, the hormonal changes that women sometimes experience can tend to really be the most worrisome. Many women do um, IF or intermittent fasting and they don't have any issues, but those who do show signs of hormonal changes um, that might need to, where well, you might need to consult your doctor and possibly switch protocols or stop intermittent fasting altogether. So those hormonal imbalances often, um, it's often not from doing the fasting correctly. Now that's good news because it means you can correct it. It means as long as you follow your protocol, there's a good chance you won't have any of the problems. But if your body senses starvation, by going too long without food, your hormones may increase, thus creating an imbalance. That's why it's essential to only stick to the number of hours you're meant to fast and not go over it by too much. Super important, super important. So some of the signs of hormone imbalance include bloating or irregular periods and maybe bleeding mid-cycle. But again, it's been my experience in working with my clients that this can be corrected rather easily by you know, making sure that you have sufficient nutrients when you do eat and not exceeding that um, that fasting window. So let's talk about intermittent fasting cautions. Unfortunately, everybody cannot do this yet if they have underlying conditions. So intermittent fasting is basically a weight loss tool that works for some people, doesn't work for everyone. It's not recommended for people who are prone to eating disorders because it's just going to make that worse. And it could also be a potential issue for those with underlying health conditions like severe adrenal fatigue high metabolic rate, type one diabetes, neurologic instability, severe hypoglycemia, which is blood sugar when it falls too low. Binge eaters, again, those are people that are, are, are prone to eating disorders. Um, they may overeat on non-fasting days. Pregnancy and pre-puberty children, this is not recommended. Um, for some of these um, areas, if, we, if you get yourself balanced, uh, you could enjoy intermittent fasting, but you have to get yourself up to um, some safe therapeutic um, state first. Let's talk about tips. We're coming down to the end here. Here are some do's and don'ts to start intermittent fasting. 
you want to pick your protocol first and do plenty of planning. You got to plan first. You want to make sure you know when you're going to eat and what you're going to eat and how much. Number two, don't go extreme on the first day. It's best to start with the lesser protocols, right? The one that is the low hanging fruit that seems the easiest, like the 16, eight before doing a 24 hour fast. You want to listen to your body. Number three, the intermittent fasting method you are using may not work good for you. And so we have to make adjustments to it. So if you decide to try intermittent fasting, keep in mind that diet quality is crucial. It's everything. It's, it's not possible to binge on ultra processed foods during the eating periods and expect to manage your weight to boost your health. It just will not happen. So also before embarking on intermittent fasting, make sure you consult a healthcare professional because many of you, I don't know how often you see a physician or how often you have blood tests or physical, you may have some underlying conditions that you're not aware of. So I encourage you to make sure you talk to a, a, a practitioner or someone that you trust, a medical person that you trust. So now let's talk about resources. There are many, 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 many resources. Um, that are out there, but I want to stick to some resources that would allow you to take action now and not overwhelm you. Um, so the BBSMD survey, everyone who completes the survey will receive a free one-year subscription to Vegetarian Journal and an African Plate Recipe booklet. And that booklet will probably have some really amazing recipes for you to experiment with if you're going to also do intermittent fasting, and even if you're not, right? Um, and then I'm providing you with an intermittent fasting for beginners e-guide, free, 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 just for showing up and staying until the end. And finally, I'm going to be offering um, everyone here just today a special price uh, for your participating today in a three-day mini cleaning, um, mini clean eating guide. So mini clean eating program is a perfect way to transition to eating more plant-based food if you're a newbie. Some of you may be newbies to plant-based eating or plant-centered eating. It's also a great way to restore balance if you generally eat clean, but you fell off the wagon. And also if you choose to do intermittent fasting, the recipes that are in this guide are gonna give you nutrient rich meals during your feasting hours from which to choose. So you're gonna get chef created gut friendly recipes for breakfast, lunch, and dinner to keep you feeling satisfied and energized. I also have some success strategies in that guide, pre-planning, um, eating simple, thinking simple. Cause remember we don't make this too complicated and weight release tips. Normally that guide I, I give to my clients for $15, but I'm offering a discounted rate of $7 um, for you just showing up today. Um, there is a caveat, you have to um, pay for it by 11.59 p.m. today. And I'll put those links in the chat for you as we move through. And I think that's it, we have one more slide. So I just want to let you know about an upcoming webinar. Um, our next webinar is Essential Supplements and Vitamins Needed by Vegetarian and Vegans. I hope that you will attend um, that. So I'm going to um, stop the share, start answering some questions, and then I'll put those links up that we just talked about, okay? So here we go. And you will want to see me, obviously. So I'm going to get myself in here. All right, I'm having difficulty getting my video to work. Hold on just a moment. There we go, found it. All right. Okay, can you all see me? Yes. Oh, great, all yes. right. Nice, nice, nice. All right, it's nice to see everybody else here too. Yes, so, <laughs> so, yes we can see you. Oh, wonderful. So um, I'm gonna go to the chat first to see what kinds of questions that we have going on here. Um, and then I will invite you all to, um, I'll invite you to, you know, come up and, you know, raise your hand and, and just chat because we're all friendly here. All right, let me go up. 
Thank you for your patience. And we've got plenty of time. We are scheduled to be together until 3.15. So we'll have plenty of time for this q and A. I I quickly ran through the presentation to allow that. Okay, so um, I will try not to use your name um, unless you, if you said something to me privately, if you sent it out to publicly, then I'm gonna use your name. Okay, Barbara, um, you said, I talk about veg variations based on gender. What about age, too young or too old for fast? That's a good question. Um, as far as too young, um, pre-puberty children, it's not advised. Um, as far as too old, I, there, there is no real um, limit on that. The, the big issue is whether or not people have those pre-existing conditions that we talked about, like adrenal issues or metabolic issues. Um, th that's what's really most important. Um, I hope that answered your question. Yes, thank you. You're so welcome. And then um, thank you all for being with me. Um, if I mispronounce your name, please forgive me, Ilona. Okay, when you tried going um, WFPB, WFPB, what is that? That doesn't sound familiar to me. It was high carb, so I ended up gaining weight. How can you do this without eating so many carbs? I can't find a balance. Okay, that's a really good question. So with intermittent fasting, it's gonna be a combination of restrictive eating but also finding a plan that works for you. You've already determined that you can't eat that many carbs. So really about finding balance that works for you. And I really support my clients in doing that. Um, if you're doing it alone, it's just a matter of just reducing the carbs and seeing how that works for you. If you're struggling with that, I can, I can certainly support you with that. Um, but that's, that's a fair question. I hope that answered it. So I'm not going to use your name because you sent a direct message to me. Um, you said, I personally use fasting. My last meal is no later than 8 p.m. And my next meal is around 9 a.m. the next day. Awesome. Um, how's that working for you? I was told not to do a one or two day full fast, nothing but water or broth, but my weight hasn't budged. Could that be stress related and raising my cortisol level? How can I push through this? Um, to release fat? Okay, that's a good question. So um, cortisol gets released, can sometimes get released at the wrong time if you have some stress, like you said. So intermittent fasting is not going to um, help you if you don't all also address your stress. Having said that, there might be some, um, some changes that we could do working together uh, once I get to know you a little better. Because even using terms like how can I push through to release uh, fat while fasting, um, it's, it's really, I think, a combination of, of looking at what you're currently eating um, and seeing you know, where you might be feeling stressed. Or maybe when during your feasting periods, you may be eating foods that are either causing stress or inflammation or um, making your blood sugar go up. So there, there's lots of room here to explore. And that's really what it's all about, you getting to know your body a little better. So I'm gonna go down a little bit more. Yeah, Emily says she has the same problem. <laughs> um, uh, Iona says you can't find dessert that doesn't trigger eating more. Yeah, so sugar, sugar is a real deal struggle. Um, it's designed to be pleasurable. And it's designed to, um, it's, it's designed to be addictive. Um, the, the, what I can tell you is that if you have sugar cravings, sometimes that's really, you can replace that by making sure that your blood sugar is balanced. And that means having um, sufficient amounts of protein in your, in your bloodstream so that to reduce those um, sugar cravings. And there's ways to get around that, but I'd have to get to know you as a person to do that. So this is just general information. Um, would you please repeat the info and study about um, IF and Alzheimer's? So, um, Alzheimer's and dementia has been found to be reduced or re the risk reduced um, um, because of intermittent fasting. So it reduces the risk of Alzheimer's and um, also dementia because it increases your cognitive function. They did a study on that. Um, would I repeat it? I tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to um, give everyone this as a PDF. You'll have to get it through Black Veg um, through our um, through our mailing, we are actually do a, a follow-up blog and I can bundle this up and give it to you um, in about a week if you make sure that you um, 
look out for email from Black Veg. So those of you who have been with us for a while know. So I'll, I'll bundle this up as a PDF for you if that helps. helps. Um, so um, Leah says, I'm having more evening and nighttime cravings. Any suggestions? Well, that, that really depends. What, are you having cravings for sugar or salt? Are you having cravings because you're, you're a mindset that you're used to eating that way? I have to get to know you as a person. Um, but if your cravings are based on sugar, and I guess you're saying that that's during your, your fasting hours. See, I, I have to get to know you a little better. So yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Yes. Go tell me more. <laughs> um, so both sweet and salty, it's like, like, a, I'm right before I go to bed, I feel like I need something else and I've tried water, mm -hmm. but it doesn't. It doesn't do it for me. What, what time is your last meal before you go to bed? Um, well, my snacking is 11. <laughs> my real meal is like seven. Yeah. So you snack at 11. Is that because of the cravings? Yes. Yeah. So I, if I were to work with you and I'd have to, because I don't want to describe, I don't want, I don't want you to disclose too much of your personal, we'd have to take a look at what that last meal looks like right? To make sure it's not physiological. And if it's psychological, we have to work on that too, right? Um, hunger is real. Um, the body registers it the same way, whether you have a mental or emotional craving or physical craving. But I would take a look at that last meal and make sure that it's, it's balanced. And also, I don't know when the last time you've had your blood work checked to see if you may have some underlying conditions that are causing the craving, like um, blood sugar mismanagement, dis dis dysregulation, or perhaps some adrenal issues. So if I were working with you, that's the first thing I'd want to look at, not only what you're eating, when you're eating it to make sure you're balanced, but I'd like to take a look at um, uh, your, your blood work to see, you know, where, where you stand. And then we could determine whether or not it's physiological or psychological. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. I know you, and again, without knowing you guys personally, anything I'm giving is very surface because um, the body is very complex and simple at the same time. There can be many systems that are out of balance that are causing the craving from not getting enough calories to blood sugar, to uh, adrenal fatigue, to thyroid. So yeah, let's see. All right, um, yeah, so um, I want to say Simona says, I'm interested in the 16-8. It seems I'm already doing that. Perfect. Exactly. For me, the 16-8 came to me naturally and it started with not eating when I wasn't hungry. And then I found no matter what time I went to bed or how late I ate, I really was not eating before noon. So it was easy yeah. for me. That's a good one to start. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I find that I've been doing that. Mm -hmm. because I basically just eat veggies and fish. Mm. But lately, sometimes I find that if I'm home early and not doing anything, then mm. I might get a craving at night. So ah. I try to go to applesauce or something. <laughs> so that was very telling what you said. Um, uh, sometimes, remember, sometimes we, we eat food for other things other than nutrition. We eat uh, because, we, for example, my husband eats in front of the TV. Right. So for him, it's like it's like another food group. You know, he can't eat in front of the TV. He hasn't eaten. So I think that, again, it was very telling when you said, I, you know, you eat. It sounds like out of boredom in the evening. Sometimes. I don't know. I just find that if I'm in the house, I try to take a moment like today and just rest my body and stay home. Mm -hmm. Then you start looking around and, yes. and it's like, okay, why is that cookie sitting there? <laughs> yes. So do you remember what I, uh, in one of the previous slides, I said that um, and you, you really have to make sure that you figure out what to do in your fasting hours in the way of maybe a hobby, reading a book, taking a bath, find some other ways to nourish yourself and do self-care and see if that helps. Does that make sense? That's why I'm so happy I found you today. Okay. <laughs> You're so welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 16-8 is the bomb. I love 16-8. It, it, it has worked for many of my clients when we, we start with spontaneous, and this has been the sweet spot for almost everybody I work with the 16-8. Okay, so let's move on to 
Um, does drinking lemon water and water with psyllium husk fiber in the morning still count as fasting? Unfortunately, it does not. Um, the psyllium husk is fiber, so it's going to stimulate um, something. So you don't want, you, you really don't want anything but plain water. Um, and, and one of the, the beverages that I recommend, obviously water, tea, um, without any you know, added sugar in it. Um, some people can do coffee. I'm not a big fan of that, but you don't want anything um, triggering hunger or getting your body to, to stop fasting and going into the feasting mode. Now, having said that, it's your body. I say experiment with that and see what works for you. I'm just giving you general rules, right? General rules. There's no right or wrong except what's right or wrong for you. And I say try and see how that works for you. So, oh, um, I don't know, explain. She's a whole foods plant-based. Thank you. I did not know we were using that WFPB. I'm going to have to use that. Um, Leah, I've heard about eating protein macros, same as your weight. Is that correct? I, Leah, I'm, I'm not a nutritionist. And so I really can't answer questions about eating protein make macros, the same as your weight. Um, I would invite you to contact a nutritionist who may be more familiar with that. Uh, let's see. So someone sent me a private message, so I will not be using your name. I work three 12-hour shifts a week, 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. I would have to change your fasting times on work days and non-work days. Is 16-8 recommended to start off um, for a month? I, okay, so a month might be a bit much. I'd say 16-8 is good to start off for three days and see how it works for you, right? Because you do have some... Um, it looks like you do have some challenges with um, 12 hour shifts and all that, but I would say try it. Try for three days, listen to your body, see what adjustments you need to make, and then go for another three days, and then go for another three days. Because if you can do anything for three days, then you can do it for three weeks. I hope I answered your question. Um, let's see. Okay, WD said, do you have a good source or guide for food? And spice substitutes, sometimes recipes call for ingredients that you may not be able to find in a typical grocery store, causing your meals to be boring, then be enters bad eating. Give me an example, WD. Talk to me, talk to us. Can you pop on? Yes, can you hear me? I can. So like, you know, you're trying to do right. You, you know, you, you maybe have some type of intimate eating or fasting in place, mm -hmm. but then you find yourself eating the same food over and over again because mm -hmm. it's like variety. So um, I noticed like, for example, in comes this recipe book and like, yeah, I'm getting excited about this, but I got $5 on it. It's going to ask me for a blue polka dot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so oh, I'm going to eat this donut. I'm going back to the donut. And then there goes the intermittent fasting out the window. I understand. So if I'm hearing you correctly, you're like, wow, I get these wonderful recipes, but they seem to be a bit complicated. And, um, and they may call for recipes. Uh, they may, the recipes are complicated, more than five ingredients. And maybe some of them uh, you need to get on a plane and fly across the world to get them. So... <laughs> I would, my, my answer to that is I would find recipes that are easier. So for example, in this three day mini, uh, mini eating guide that I'm going to offer you guys or, or, you know, put in the, in the chat, that is five ingredients or less and simple ingredients that you can find in your home or at a, at a health food store, nothing exotic. So I would say, I would say always, you know, simple. I, my, I, I love simple. I'm, I'm a trained chef and I don't do exotic. I'm just saying it's it's five ingredients or less and um, and it can be just as tasty. Uh, my husband watched me make salad dressing the other day and he said, I can't believe you just made that with avocado, lemon and basil and just a tiny little bit of sea salt. OK, you know what I mean? so go for the simple recipes. Don't don't try to just, you know, you, you know, if you're getting a, a product or a service that's not working for you, don't adjust yourself. Go find something that works within your lifestyle. Okay. Hope that helps. <laughs> okay. Um, so Emily's thinking the same thing. Stephanie said, thanks for the info. So Andrea, you said a few grapes of raw almonds is helping for nighttime snack and satisfy the food craving. Well, that's a good tip. 
Um, uh, how are you digesting that? Generally, uh, two of these things are not like the other. You've got sugar and you've got some heavy fats and proteins. So that that really does that provide? Did that cause any um, any digestive issues for you, Andrea? If you can get on and tell us about that. No, it doesn't. Oh, and I good. usually um, drink a bit of water afterwards. Okay, very good. Well, there you are. And so, um, have you? I don't want you to disclose your medical issues. Um, uh, do you have a diagnosis that is causing the sugar craving? Uh, no, I just like sweets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the addiction is real. Yeah, I get it. Well, here's the thing about, um, and I know, it, again, we talked about that broad spectrum of things that will happen when you start fasting. Um, I find my sugar cravings did go away because I was able to balance my blood sugar better, right? Um, and that simply cannot happen unless you're in fat burning mode, your body becomes a fat burning machine, doesn't rely so much on sugar, you're not gonna consume as much sugar and the cravings may go away. But again, I'm gonna repeat what I said, cravings uh, can be physiological, they can be psychological. Like you said, I just like sugar. Well, you know, cause it's, it's designed. And so it's designed for you to, to, to like it. Now I'm gonna talk about processed sugar cause there's different types of sugar. There's natural sugar, natural fruit sugar, natural sugar sources. And then there's that processed sugar, which is a chemical. Now as a chemical, I read this somewhere and I'm sure that I can find it if I need to share it with you, um, is that um, processed sugar is one compound away from cocaine. So you see how it could be that addictive? Um, so I would encourage anyone that's, that's eating processed sugar to replace, uh, do the step down method. So replace the processed sugar with more natural sugars and see if your body processes it differently or better. All right, so instead of, they've got monk free fruit and yacon syrup and dates and, and there's so many other substitutes you might wanna consider. So I hope that works. Um, Patricia says 24 works for you. Yay, Patricia, you wanna share with us what benefits you re you've received to inspire other people that might wanna do intermittent fasting? What benefits you, if you feel up to it, if you feel you're too shy, I get it. Yeah. Oh, go for it. <laughs> Actually, um, I've been doing it for about three years now. I got on that um, Diane Parnum uh, YouTube channel, and um, I'm just energetic. I'm 70 years old, lots of dirty pounds. Wow. I'm kind of, kind of 20, 24 with the four hours of feasting. I do weight watchers, and I've lost 30 pounds and maintaining. And uh, I wear wigs, and I look like I'm. Uh, 50 years old. I uh, date a uh, 50 year old man. I'm single. I lost my husband two years ago. And I just live life to the fullest and I feel very happy. That's uh, my life. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. Your, 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 um, your sound was a little sketchy, but I'm heard, hearing that you lost 30 pounds. Um, you gained a boyfriend that was younger. <laughs> um, you're you're um, an elder. And you, you sound strong and happy. So I hope that this inspires um, other people. And I'm sure that there was some adjustment for you in doing this. But it, as I stated earlier, intermittent fasting is not a fad. It really is something if you get to an intermittent fasting program that works for you, it is a lifestyle. It is something you do for the rest of your life to maintain your good health, to maintain reasonable weight. Uh, everything depends upon not just the fasting hours, it's the feasting hours too. What are you doing in those feasting hours? And usually if you're fasting appropriately, things start to balance naturally. Okay, so Alma, um, I think that's Alima says, so what should my last meal consist of? Because I'm also a late night snacker. Well, that's personal. It really, it, it should be well balanced, you know, fats, carbs, um, protein, it should be well balanced so that your blood sugar maintains stable for at least four hours. But if you're, if you, if you don't have a sufficient amount of protein, carbs, and fat, and a, a balance that works for you, then you could experience hunger. But really, ideally, the test is if you can go three to four hours, then what you've eaten is sufficient. And again, I'd have to know you as a person because again, it's physiological. There are many things that affect that or it could be psychological. 
Um, we live or die around food. I mean, it's just um, the focus we have is just, we focus on food for everything other than nutrition. That's not saying that's you, I'm just saying. Um, so Margaret says, is there really any benefit to using apple cider vinegar? No, there's plenty of benefits uh, too, too numerous to name, but the one that I really love is it helps with digestion of food. Many of my clients have um, low stomach acid and I'm finding that when they um, do apple cider vinegar, once a day, it helps, um, it helps with the digestion of food in their stomachs. Uh, let's see, Ilona said, do you think shakes are a good idea to break a fast? I think anything that is healthy, doesn't have processed sugar in it, and provide you with the plant-based nutrients that we talked about is good. If that's in your shake, then yeah, go for it. Let's see, let's see. Ooh, we've got 20. Do you believe in my plate for whole um, filling a meal guideline. I believe in anything that works for you that will keep you healthy and keep you inspired to do anything. So everybody's different. So I'd say, yeah. Um, I want to say this is my first time doing a virtual class and I'm grateful that you did this presentation. It was user-friendly and informative and I like all the books behind you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, that was very sweet. Um, Margaret says, I love simple food is medicine. Absolutely simple food is medicine, right? Um, let's see, Simona says, trying hard to get taste for avocado. You mean you don't like it? So here's what I say. If something really doesn't resonate with you and doesn't appeal to you, don't eat it. Don't force it in your body. There's, there might be a reason that you don't like avocados. Maybe you have some genetic disposition that doesn't allow you to digest them well. Maybe you don't like the look of them. Like my husband doesn't, if, if avocado is put in something and he doesn't know it's in there, he eat it. But the looks of it makes him nauseous. He said it looks slimy. So I just say, go with what works. Mm -hmm. I'm with your husband. They, they make me <laughs> nauseous. Yeah. So, but if, if I put it in something, he doesn't know it's there. So I, I'm saying there are other foods that can satisfy you um, that, that, um, it's like, like, the, like I told the lady earlier, don't try to fit yourself into a food. Go out there and look for what works for you. That, that plant-based food world we live in is very broad, very, very robust. I'm sure you can find something else that you can enjoy. Thank you so much. Um, Nick says, uh, Wayne Wheeler says, what about partnering up with another person in the motivation while transitioning? Perfect. A support group or a support partner is perfect. Um, and should I share with my family and friends? Well, you know what? Depends. If your family and friends are, you know, um, Debbie Downers, I wouldn't do that. If there are people that will support you, no matter what you say you're trying to do, that's fine because everybody has opinions about intermittent fasting. Um, so you need to make sure these people will support what you do, even if they don't understand what you do. Does that make sense? Um, so you said you have type 2 diabetes. This would be perfect for you. And you've been cleared by your, oh, good, perfect to try intermittent fasting, but it's hard when others in the household and friends aren't supportive. It absolutely is hard. It, it, I, I'm gonna tell you, you probably need an outside coach to at least support you for the first four weeks and to help you um, have others help you um, because it's really difficult if other people aren't supporting you. So the focus really has to be on what can you do for yourself. Um, so if you are interested in working with me, um, you, can, you can go to my website and we'll just do a 20 minute chat, see if we're a good fit. Uh, let's see, what are good supplements vitamins to take to help with diet? Does collagen work when dieting? Okay, so this is a little outside the scope of this. I would invite you to go to the next webinar that we're going to do next month. We'll be talking all about vitamins and minerals and nutrients that, um, that would be needed for vegetarians and vegans to stay healthy. Um, because I don't want to give recommendations for vitamins and supplements at this point. I'd rather have people focus on real whole foods. And to say, and having said that, yes, most people do need vitamins and, and, um, and some supplements of some form. Um, but the idea is to get as much as you can from food if your digestion will do it. Okay, great. Um, let's see. I mean, when doing intermittent fasting, uh oh, my cursor just froze. Why, why, why? There we go. Okay, I meant when doing intermittent fasting, oh, vitamins to keep you full, like, um, vitamins to keep you full, like ACV. So when doing intermittent fasting, are you talking about doing your feeding hours? 
because you don't want to, you want to drink just water. You really want to drink water during your fasting hours, water, tea. You want to focus on hydration during your fasting hours. I, um, I don't think apple cider vinegar, I mean, I would say just try it, but that's not something I would recommend. And maybe I didn't answer your question correctly. And if not, feel free to reach out to me privately um, through my, uh, my website. Um, there's a pop-up message that says, contact me and I'll answer questions. Any tips for breastfeeding moms? Um, I would say talk to your physician first. I cannot give you an advice. I, I don't feel comfortable with that. So I would say go to your physician first and find out what issues there might be with breastfeeding moms and missing and fasting. Okay. Um, gosh, I feel like, did we get everybody? Hmm. Anybody want to pop on? And if I, if I missed your chat, um, okay. So AA says, um, okay. So not taking vitamins like daily multivitamins. Oh, okay. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I misunderstood. I'm doing your fast, doing your fasting window. You just want to drink water, right? Because most vitamins and minerals are in supplement form are, um, uh, fat soluble. So you need to eat them with a little bit of food. So I would say use your, eat your supplements with your food. If that makes sense. So I'm not saying don't do it. If you're doing a multivitamin for a particular reason and it's working for you, that's perfect. But again, I, I need to work with people to find out what they're taking, why they're taking it before I can give really good advice about it. So this is just general, 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 <laughs> very general. Um, so we've got about 15 minutes to go. I'm going to make sure I caught everybody because I'm not sure this chat box is helping me see everything. Um, wow, I think. I think we got everybody. I'm going down, going down, going down. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> do you have a YouTube channel showing a plant-based diet? We do. Black Veg does. <laughs> so if you go to Black Veg Society and go to our website, um, you'll have all the uh, the videos that I've done, that um, some of my colleagues have done, some of them even do um, demos. So yeah, just start start with us. And um, so most of my classes, food is medicine classes are on YouTube as well. So you may find one of them that might be supportive and helpful for you. Okay, um, but I don't have a, I don't have a YouTube channel personally, but I do they I, I have a, a sub channel under Black Veg where all of these food as medicine classes that I've done live. And thank you for your interest. All right, that's the last one at 302. So I think, whoo, I think I got everybody. All right, anybody wanna pop on and chat with me um, about anything else while I go get those um, links and put them in the chat? Uh, okay, so um, Antoine, and Antoine says he prepare quinoa and then roast various veggies, tofu, two types of beans and different seasonings, and I make uh, four types of bowls with them. It's an easy prep and different flavors. I love that. See what I'm saying? Simple is best. Um, usually when I work with my clients, we work on soup sides, sauces, and smoothies, right? Because veggies um, taste better with sides or with, with some sort of sauce, or they taste better with some sort of um, uh, cream base or something we can do. But the bottom line is you can take base food like Antoine has done and just prepare it differently. And that also gives you the uh, variety of foods that we need. So here's a tip. Um, uh, one of the things I advise my clients to do is eat the rainbow. And I actually had a client that I gave her a form that showed different colors of food. And, and she noticed that she was only eating food in a certain color. So you're not getting all the full phytonutrients, but it looks like Antoine, because of the way you know, he's preparing foods, he's, he might be getting the full spectrum of colors in his food doing it that way, as opposed to eating the same thing over and over again, um, which does not benefit the body. Uh, you might stay alive, but you may not have optimal health. Okay, so I'm going to, oops, look for everyone here, and then we're going to, um, I'm going to give you the link. Thank you all for your patience. I have been used to having someone work with me and she's um, busy today. So thank you for um, your patience. Um, 
where are you all coming from, calling from? Um, is everybody local to me, like Maryland? Or um, are you anybody from overseas? Give me a little shout out. Texas, all right. <laughs> I used to live in Texas, actually. All right, so um, the first link that I'm going to put in, I encourage you guys to go ahead and download that right away um, or get it off the chat is the survey, which is super important to me because I love what I do and I always want to do the best I can for the people that I serve. Oh, Maryland, New York, Arizona, Atlanta, Toronto in the house, yay! Oh, wow, 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 Virginia Beach. <laughs> That's so cool. PA. All right, so did you guys see the, the first link that I put up? Go get that. Uh oh, you guys are running fast here. Maryland, hey everyone. <laughs> UK, wow. All right, did everybody get that first link? And that was for the survey. Okay, good, 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 good. All right, so keep it coming. I'm going to put the second link up. And again, thank you all for the patience. Um, I am being both hostess and also assistant. So the next one is the Intermittent Fasting for Beginners Guide. So it's going to take a lot of what we talked about today and it's going to be a little bit, it's going to be expanded and it'll be in a form where you can really, um, you know, won't be so fast. Like you can actually see everything I've said and, and get a little bit more detail um, to see how I can work for you. Okay, you didn't get it. Okay, here's the second one. Thank, thank you, Giovanni. And uh, feel free, you guys, to help a sister out. You can repost it. <laughs> All right, so that's the second one. That's the free um, uh, intermittent fasting for beginners guide. So it has all the stuff we talked about: women's hormones, work, uh, eating during workouts, uh, fasting hours, all that good stuff. If you guys, if anybody's having trouble <clears throat> finding any links, and you can help out, please feel free to repost it here. And now here's the third one. You guys are so patient. I love this. This is why I love what I do. This community is so special to me. Um, the next one is that, that mini clean eating guide that has all these beautiful recipes that I talked about. They're simple, five ingredients or less because you know I am that girl. Um, or if, they, if it's a little bit more than that, it's not, it's not um, they're not ingredients that you have to travel around the world to get. Because I know if it's not simple, you're not gonna do it. Um, let's see, here we go. There we go. Here's the last one. And this is the one that's super important for you all to pay attention to. This particular guide has recipes and some other things to, um, to help you uh, with um, tips and tricks for weight loss. I'm offering it for $7 only until 11.59 p.m. today. It's normally $15. So if you said, if you, if you go after it tomorrow, you can still get it, but you're gonna get it at the $15 rate. I'm doing that to honor you and to show my appreciation for you spending your time here. Um, just, just, I just so applaud you for taking this opportunity to improve your health, to be in community with other people who are like-minded. So that's just my, my gift to you. Um, for doing that. Um, wow, you guys, this has been, I can't believe the time has gone so fast. Do we have any other, um, if someone could post a survey site again, um, I could actually do that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Anybody else want to chat with me? What did you learn from this? What was your biggest takeaway for those of you who are not familiar with intermittent fasting? What, what was something that you learned um, that you found like was an aha for you. Uh oh. Hmm. Don't know how I got out of this. What I learned and what I love is that there are different ways to fast, and you know, I you know I, I always get paranoid because breakfast is the most important meal of the day we've been sold. Yeah, about you know, that. So, you know, for me, I, and I've never been comfortable with breakfast. My stomach has always rumbled and I was like, I tried to force stuff down. Wow. So now it's honoring my body. I love that. Yes. I, I well, first of all, I applaud you for, um, for understanding that uh, we've been told something that might work for some people, but doesn't work for everyone. 
and that you now can use your own body wisdom with good information. And let's just say breakfast might be the most important meal for you. Maybe not. But now you have other information that's that you can try. So thank you for sharing that. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. Kathy. Oops. Okay. Um, you direct message me, but it was a very nice message. So thank you very much. Very informative. Uh, Alima says, I learned that I can do this and I'm not alone. You absolutely can. And you're not alone. And you know what? Because there's such an interest in this and, and I don't want people to feel alone. I am considering maybe offering some sort of group um, program where we all get together maybe once a week for four weeks just to support if there's enough interest and I'll send some information out to see um, if there is enough interest to do that. Uh, let's see, how do you avoid getting a headache when you first start the fasting when the body is detoxing? Then I would say um, you should go ahead, and, well, there are two ways. One, take a little, drink, eat a little bit more magnesium, uh, foods with magnesium or, or minerals to help support the detoxing, help your liver to detox a little better, or if it gets too bad, just go ahead and eat a little something um, to stop the detox. But if you can, if you can get through it and get past it, on the other side is everything you want. But I, having said that, I know headaches are horrible. So if you if you need to stop the fast with a little food, then do that. Um, so okay, everybody says to be interested, learn to not in the struggle. I'm in for the group chat. Yay! Okay, I, I'm, I'm sufficiently motivated. I'm going to think about how that looks and how that would work um, because it's super important with groups that we, you know, maintain an anonymity and accountability and support for each other. And yeah, I might do that. Um, okay, and what else did anybody, um, your, your takeaway from this? Anybody else want to share their takeaway? Oh, Facebook group, that's a good idea. Anybody else want to share? I hear somebody coming on. Okay. Um, so I guess I want to ask too, what action, what small action, because some people already talked about it, what small action based on what you learned today are you planning to implement almost immediately? What, what, what inspired you? What, what are you planning to do almost immediately? And maybe you need time to think about it and that's okay too. Um, Somebody said, let's do this, the group. Yeah, Facebook group, great presentation. Thank you again, Stephanie. Sharon says, this is recorded. Yes, ma'am, almost wasn't, but I remembered. <laughs> um, yes, group effort would be important. Uh, see, what Giovanni learned was stop eating late at night. Absolutely. Um, and that's, again, remember, be kind to yourself as you're doing these things. Just notice what your body is telling you. You know, are you eating from some need other than food or nourishment. Maybe you need to nourish yourself. Maybe you need to take a bath. Maybe you need to hug on yourself and love on yourself. Um, Ernestine, but hey, Ernestine says that the 16-8 is what um, she's going to implement. Um, let's see, Erica says, thank you. I enjoyed learning about intermittent fasting. Awesome, I enjoyed teaching it. Um, yeah, so you're gonna journal on your three fasting days. I think that's great. I think that's a good idea. It, it, it helps you to understand, um, first of all, what your body is feeling because you're in touch with that. And then you make more or better conscious decisions about the eating. Uh, that's a really um, solid and mindful way, um, Antoine, what you're doing. I hope you join our group too because I feel like we can all learn a little bit from you. Let's see, Leah says, I'm doing a 16-8. Yay for the 16-8. It's going to be amazing. So if anybody's scared to take on the 16-8, just do spontaneous. Just say, hey, I'm not hungry. I'm not going to eat and just notice it. All right. So um, Alina says, I'm going to turn off the TV once I go to bed. I'm finding that's when I do a lot of stuff. Again, right? Because you associate eating with entertaining. So that happens. Oh, a lot of people are going to do the 16-8. I'm so excited. Oh my word. That's great. I, I think you're going to find this. And remember with the 16-8, if you didn't remember the tip I gave before, I hope I said this. With 16-8, if you can't get up to the full 16, starting around 12 is perfectly respectable. And then add an hour and add an hour and add an hour because you don't, if you're, if you've never done, you know, 16 hours, let's say if you've hovered around eight, that's a big gap, right? So shorten the gap one hour at a time, right? Okay. Anybody else want to share? We've got about a minute left. 
Uh, let's see. Sharon says, I did it pre-COVID, lost 55 pounds, but restarted bad habits and had to come back back on track now. Awesome. So you found something that works for you and you were able to get back. That's great to hear, Sharon. I wish you luck with that. Um, Cheryl says, I've been doing 14-10. We'll try 16-8. Awesome. So Cheryl, I, I would ask you, um, are you achieving benefits from 14-10? And what do you think 16-8 will do for you that 14-10 hasn't? Hi, this is Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. I uh, I lost a lot of weight uh, with the fourteen ten, and then I stopped for a while, and I started gaining weight back, and so now I've gone back to the fourteen eight. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. I just wanted to try to see if there were any additional benefits. But 14, I mean, 1410 has been working well for me, though. Yeah. So here's the thing, and I thank you for sharing that. This is just information, right? information, it's science. The, the, the wisdom comes from taking that science, trying it out, experiencing in your body and seeing what works, right? So 1410 is working for you, girl, keep doing you, keep being you, right? Your body will, um, will thank you. And you can always experiment with the 168 to see if there is a difference. Um, Ilona says, did I miss hearing how to find out who won the drawing? You sure didn't. What I'm doing is taking 150 people who registered for this class, putting them in this little uh, program, and, um, and then the drawing will take place probably on Monday. And the, if, maybe, if, if you won, you'll receive an email, but it'll also be posted in our Black Veg newsletter or um, information that we send out. So you didn't miss. So don't you worry about that. So I'm going to post the links one more time, and then we're going to sign off. If you all are okay with that, I just want to make sure everybody got a chance to get all three of the links. Again, the first one I'm going to post is that Black Veg survey. I want to hear every comment, good or glowing and growing, because I want to constantly grow. <laughs> Copy, and we're going to go there. So this is the Black Veg um, survey. Margaret said, thank you. Everybody's saying thank you. Okay, so now I have to post this to everyone. And then if you all have gotten all you need to get out of this, feel free to sign off. I'm just going to post the link one more time for everyone that came in a little late. So this is the Black Veg um, survey form. And then we're going to do the next one, which is the freebie. Um, the internet, the intermittent fasting guide. I hope you guys find that useful. Even if you are an experienced faster, you may find something in there that you've never seen before, or like, I didn't know that, or maybe I should think differently about that. Okay, so I'm gonna send this to everyone in the meeting. And this was the freebie, download it now. Here we go. Yay! And then the last one is um, sort of my, my gift to you, but there's a little nominal fee attached to it. And that is the mini clean eating program because really the feasting, the feasting hours are as important as the fasting hours. So what you're eating during those feasting hours is going to support health. Remember, this is not a starvation program. So our feasting hours have to be full of nutrition. They have to be conscious and mindful of what we're eating. So this gives you a good start with some, what I think are delicious recipes. Um, I'd love to get some feedback on it. So uh, again, it's $7 if you buy it before 11.59 PM. After that, it goes back up to the regular price of $15, which is still a bargain. There we go. Oh, Anna from the UK, thank you for being here. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you, everybody. I hope to see you next month um, for the um, next food as uh, medicine webinar. And with that, 318, I honored your time. Thank you so much. Feel free to reach out to me if you say, oh, I wish I had asked this question. I will answer all questions. Just give me a little bit of time because um, I do see clients on, I work at a um, integrative health practice as well. Okay, go off, have a great time, and we'll start thinking about getting together as a group. Thanks a bunch. <laughs> have all a good right, weekend, everybody. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs>